Now let me show you some examples on block level. For example, VMware Tanzu. Okay. So this is uh, the logical diagram for VMware Tanzu. So you see the Kubernetes engine is available here. So VMware Tanzu is a complete Kubernetes platform which includes Kubernetes as well as other components. So other components are the choice of VMware to integrate with Kubernetes, right? So these are all the other components. So the networking is uh, networking uh, solution is being chosen as Entry and Calico. You see, the logging solution is chosen as Fluent Bit. Okay, ingress control with Contour, uh, user authentication with Pinibd, uh, registries with Harbor, observability that means monitoring alarms graphs with Prometheus and Grafana, load balancing with VMware NSX. These are all the components chosen by VMware for their Tanzu distribution of Kubernetes and Kubernetes as a core engine is available at the lower layers. Okay, so the Tanzu platform can be hosted uh, uh, as a as a VMware vSphere um, uh, component and on top of Amazon and Microsoft Azure also. Okay, so when it will be hosted on uh, public clouds, there will be uh, open APIs available, uh, which will uh, make this communication possible between the cloud platform and the and Tanzu. Okay, so this as a whole platform is Tanzu. So Tanzu has this Kubernetes engine in its core and the rest of the components is the choice of VMware. What, what they want to use um, from the available options in the market. Okay, similarly, we have Red Hat OpenShift. So if you see, this is the uh, block level diagram of Red Hat OpenShift. So we have Kubernetes engine here. If you see Red, um, uh, the uh, Kubernetes engine is deployed on top of either RHEL or uh, CoreOS. Okay. And on top of the engine, we have other services. So you have uh, platform services, application services, developer productivity services. So these are all plugins. Okay. Plugins and uh, your CSI, CRI, CNIs, all those services. Okay, so these services are choice of Red Hat, what they want to use from uh, from the available options in the market. So Red Hat OpenShift offer Kubernetes with many additional features. Um, it has a built in application development tool chain also. So for a developer, uh, Red Hat OpenShift is a very good um, option because they has an inbuilt uh, development tool chain also with all the development uh, platforms available like MySQL, MongoDB, Jenkins, Node.js, Python, .NET, all these platforms are integrated within the Red Hat OpenShift. So a developer develops, can develop a code, can write a Docker image and then can manage uh, the same container workloads using, using Red Hat OpenShift here. Okay. So the purpose of showing you this is that like this is, uh, this is also doing the same job as we have uh, we we have seen uh, for, uh, in the in the previous slide with vmware tanzu tanzu is also doing the same job red hat uh, openshift is also doing the same job both of them having kubernetes as its as their core and the additional services they have built around can be different okay so they have the flexibility there now let me show you um, two managed kubernetes uh, services uh, managed kubernetes platforms also so as an example, I have chosen here AWS and GCP, Google Cloud. So in AWS, as we see, like uh, AWS has many services. Okay. So here what happens is uh, in case of any managed Kubernetes platform, the connected services are available within the same cloud provider. Right. So these people do not have to integrate the services separately with the with the with their Kubernetes engine. So AKS is available as a as a as the main core engine here. If you see Amazon EKS, sorry, Elastic Kubernetes Service, not AKS, EKS here with Amazon, and rest all components so like networking for storage, for monitoring, for uh, for performance, rest all services are already available within Amazon as their separate services, right? So for storage, for example, they have uh, uh, um, S3 as their object storage service. Okay. And uh, for networking, they have uh, EPC, 
i mean uh, vpc sorry virtual private cloud available uh, um, as a networking service by aws okay so these cloud providers what they do is they integrate their existing services with kubernetes okay and they make it as a uh, whole platform for kubernetes based development and management similarly in case of google cloud you see this is gke google kubernetes engine and this is uh, integrated with so if you need networking they have a networking solution if you need storage they have um, uh, cloud storage available for you if you need any monitoring solutions so they have stack driver monitoring and prometheus available for you so you do not have to integrate them separately just pick the component and attach it here okay so that's why least platform engineering effort is required in case of managed kubernetes solutions okay and more engineering platform effort is required in case of uh, private uh, kubernetes solution or customized solutions so this was uh, some introduction of various kubernetes distributions just to give you an idea uh, how things operate in actual okay so this was everything on the block level we will see it in detail in in our next sections